So I'm pretty excited today because we've got David Foster in. Yeah. Um, he's from Beyond Science. We've been watching you, David, over the last couple of years, going from what looked like a small company and a very big and very busy looking company at the minute. And I'm very interested to hear and just share with some of the guys on the podcast how you got to where you are, what's kind of driven you to be where you are and where you're going as well. Well, you said there, Chris, you know, it was a small company mm-hmm. um, um, up until about three and a half years ago. Yeah. So I, I, I've worked in science since I left school. I've never really done anything else. So that's near 21 years I've been doing it, you know. And uh, I've worked for companies here and I've worked for companies over in Scotland as well. Okay. And the company I used to work for, um, they closed down about seven or eight years ago and I decided to go out by myself. Mm-hmm. And I started out in Lauren just doing small jobs. Um, and then a, a childhood friend, a guy I had grown up with, got in touch with me, um, a guy I hadn't seen in about five years, mm-hmm. who was actually working for another Chinese company um, who were downsizing and he was being made redundant. Yeah. Um, I mean, him got the gallery over a coffee and decided to give it a go ourselves. And we started a company called Creative Designs NI Limited. Mm-hmm. And at the start, it was just me and him. And we were based in a small converted terraced house down in Lauren. That's actually got, when we first uh, met you, actually. Our workshop. It literally, it was like two two point two meters wide. You know what I mean? We we couldn't fit any more than an eight by four panel into it, and with a wee tiny room upstairs, um, with a, and it, it was just the bedrooms upstairs had been knocked into one room, uh-huh. but it was literally no bigger than here. I think I even remember the floorboards had like I a wee was, dip and all in them. Well. I had a wee dip, <laughs> and it, it was just well, we we started there, and I'll be honest, I, uh, when Philip and I started, it was it was extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, I just got married. Philip had just got married. Uh, I had a first baby on the way, and Phil had his first baby on the way. And we started this, and going from re- earning a reasonably good wage to earning practically awesome. nothing. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, we learned, we did earn nothing for two years. Um, we were actually getting fed mm-hmm. uh, out of our local food bank. Um, wow. We would come around to our local food bank once a week, and mm-hmm. we got our week's groceries given to us. Um, and I was very lucky that I had a very understanding wife at that time. Sure. You know? um, yeah, because you must you must have believed in what you guys were uh, going to do and going forward. Obviously, you're, you're saying a, a, it's a powerful story when you think about where Beyond Signage is now, mm-hmm. um, where you two guys were being fed on a food bank maybe three three and a half years mm-hmm. ago. Um, it would have been easy at that time for your wife to say, "David." Just go, go and get a job. job. I know, I know. And she didn't, you know, she definitely she didn't. didn't. <laughs> Phil, Phil, wow. Phil, Philip's wife didn't either, you know. Yeah. Um, we ex- like we were getting, I remember um, a while back, like, as I say, we were based in Lauren. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember getting a job in Jordanstown. Uh, we didn't have enough money to put diesel in the, wow. the van. And it wasn't even our van, it was a borrowed van that we'd borrowed Brilliant. off a mate. And uh, we didn't even have enough money to put diesel in the van to get us to Jordanstown. And I remember ringing my mum up and asking my mum to lend me 20 quid mm-hmm. to put money in the van so we could go to Jordanstown, which is what, 12 miles up the road, to be able to do a job. That's fantastic. And you had a strange um, client base, if I remember right. Oh, we had a strange client base, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a strange ranging client from what? Us. Yeah, cut, <laughs> card, cardboard cutouts and... Uh, can we? Can you make a, a sign from a garden shed and stickers for wheelie bins and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff, which was all okay. And there's, but there's a lot of businesses out there, and, and they do do a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I'd worked in this. Like I've been in this since I say 21 years at this mm-hmm. stage. What 15, 16 years. Um, so, and as I say, I've worked on a lot of large projects. That's why I knew in my head where we would like to go and what yeah. we would like to do. Excellent. But I'd never run a business before. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never, I'd never worked in business. I was always just an employee. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no real idea how to how to get us there, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and Philip and I got together, and I'd be to do it on my own. There's no way I could have done it on my own. If I had stayed on my own, I'd have still probably been in Lauren doing small jobs and just sort of ticking over. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we got together, um, at the start it was a it was very messy. Mm-hmm. Um, Phil came from a sales role yeah. in his last job, and I came from uh, an installer's. I was the installer. And I had to teach myself a wee bit how to use the computer, how mm-hmm. to operate the printers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, Philip and I decided after a while we sort of settled in where I was sort of better at going out and doing seals yeah. as such, and Philip was better at figuring out how to build the stuff and make yeah. the stuff. And we just sort of chipping away, chipping away, and I knew the type of clients that we wanted to aim for, mm-hmm. and I started approaching them and sending emails and making phone calls. And it's very difficult because there's a lot, always, obviously quite a, a few large signage companies who I, I thought at the time had the market sort of wrapped up mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and we were constantly getting knocked back and knocked back um, but then it took one company to start giving us a chance and then that led into another one and it led into another one 
and about two years after starting we moved into a slightly larger unit again in Larne. We were there about eight months. Um, it was 1,600 square feet mm-hmm. um, and we bought our first digital printer, um, which we still have, mm-hmm. um, which is for sale. <laughs> Look on the back because we've upgraded Link a few in the times. description. But um, we started off in there and then yeah. we moved from Larne. We stayed there for about eight months, eight months, ten months. Mm-hmm. And then we moved to Isla McGee, pretty close to my house, to an absolutely fantastic unit. But we just started to get busier mm-hmm. and busier. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it came at this stage, it was Philip and I. And at this stage we were getting a small wage, mm-hmm. barely minimum wage, very, very small wage. But we took on an apprentice. And the apprentice joined it's a big us. Step, isn't it? it was, although it's an apprentice. You know, we we didn't have to pay them a huge amount of money, mm-hmm. but gradually we just continued to grow a little bit at a time. It's know? a change of mindset, though. Isn't just it? a change of mindset. Whenever you, you see, know what I mean? look, we need to grow and to get here. You but have to do this this leap of faith, almost as well. I look as well at some of the work we're doing now, and these are projects I chased four years ago. Mm-hmm. But if we'd have got them four years ago, there's no way we could have done them because yeah, yeah. we wouldn't have the space, we wouldn't have the manpower, we wouldn't mm-hmm. have the resources. And then we took on our first employee. We took on a graphic designer um, yeah. to operate the printer, and he started. And that was a huge decision because we mm-hmm. we we brought him down in. He came from another sign company. He was recommended to us by a guy uh, a mate of ours called Mitch, recommended this guy, and uh, we spoke to him on the phone. He came down, and he was very keen because he'd been in the same job for twenty five years. Yeah. But we fought because it's your first employee. It's your first proper yeah. employee. Mm-hmm. We're, we're having to pay this guy quite a bit more than what we actually paid ourselves. Yeah. So we tossed this around in our heads for, uh, must have been about six weeks, and he was yeah. phoning every week if he made a decision. I don't know <laughs> what to do. I don't, it's such a huge. Co- we took him on, mm-hmm. and that instantly freed me up mm-hmm. from operating the printers. So I was able to concentrate more on knocking doors, speaking mm-hmm. to people, making but phone the, calls. But isn't that the key, though, David, when you're uh, scaling up the business? Is that you know you're actually replacing yourself that yeah. allows you to do the allows highest, me to the best up. use. Yeah, it was Phil's brother. Phil, Phil's brother said to him, um, Phil was out putting signs up one day, and his brother, who works in London, phoned him and said to him, you know, what are you doing? He says, I'm out here putting up signs. And he says, is that the best use of your time? Mm. And it sort of hit Phil. What is the best use of my time? Yeah. You know? So, so it's an important question, actually, for anybody that's in business, aye. just to ask yeah, themselves. Yeah, definitely. And I find myself today doing things, and I'm like, why am I doing this? You mm. know what I mean? Um, because for Philip and I working together for three years, I trust, I've known him my whole life, I trust him 100%. Mm-hmm. To bring somebody else in and tr- start letting go of stuff. Yeah. I, yeah, I struggled with that. Philip didn't, but I struggled with it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I started letting go of bits that I did and making sure that it was mm-hmm. done properly. Um, but it turned out that the first guy that we hired, who was Stephen, um, was actually 100 times better than I ever actually was. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because that's what he did. He, yeah. was, a, he was a designer, printer, mm-hmm. working with vinyl. But he freed us up. Um, and then about four months later, it was time to take on another employee. Mm-hmm. Um, which was a wee bit easier this time. So that was us up to four people mm-hmm. and then another one. Um, yeah. And that was five. And then at this stage, we mm-hmm. were offered a deal on a fantastic unit uh, mm-hmm. in Carrick Fergus. Um, it's approximately 8,000 square feet. Um, huge. It was huge. Yeah. I, we walked into it at the start and I was like, <laughs> how are we going to fill it? How are we going <laughs> to fill this place? And now we're looking at where can we get more space? Wow. You know? Um, and that was two years ago. We moved in there and mm-hmm. we've jumped from there now to uh, 14. 14 yeah, people working yeah. for us now um, and it's been some journey it's been amazing watching actually because I've kind of we, we've known you from the days up mm-hmm. in Lauren and we've kind of watched the business grow and we never liked you actually no I never <laughs> liked you either I like Christopher but I never liked you like, but I always wondered how, how you you brought yourself from a, a a small business where you were doing like small signs for like dog kennels and things like that and then all of a sudden like a, we were last in your, your place there and seen you as huge big um, totem poles um, scaffold and it's all sorts of printers going it just it seems to be such a big operation now, even for to take your mind from if you went back four years ago and went I'm going to be in this position four years oh, you, now you, you know, I, I remember a guy saying to me it was a fellow I was talking to he says like you know if you keep going the way you're going you know and you could see the future in 10 years it would blind you yeah you know? yeah um i don't you know how we a bit by bit little bit mm-hmm. at a time you know what i mean um i remember a guy saying to me i was actually a lady said to me and she says david control your growth mm-hmm. you know and that was something i took i was like i remember her saying this to me um she owns a, a chain of estate agents mm-hmm. and i was like what do you mean what do you mean she says just don't get too big too quick mm-hmm. yeah and I remember we have turned work away mm-hmm. um, simply because fantastic work 
high yeah. profile work and I've said listen I'm sorry I can't fulfill that yeah. because it would suck our resources and it would suck yeah. time and mm-hmm. it would take a lot of money to fund um, now it hasn't happened very often but I have we have done it in the past and it's just a little bit at a time so we've grown a wee bit and then we've grown a wee bit and we've grown a wee mm-hmm. bit but the last four years in a row we have doubled every year yeah. um, and if we double again this year which is looking very likely mm-hmm. um, it's like you know what, what do we do next you know because now we have all these people working for us yeah. it's, a, it's all yeah it's, that comes with its, yeah. its challenges can I ask a question David the, if you can look back to the, the guy who had the three days food from a food bank mm-hmm. And you you look at where you are now. There's something had to change inside. Something did. Yeah, you, you, David. Yeah, you ch- we, what what can you help us with some of that? Ch- change the mindset. Do you know what I mean? Um, you started. Yeah, ch- but that's not a switch. No, it's not. And uh, that, that, that isn't something that happened overnight. You know, yeah. I, I look back. I when, I can remember coming to the the food bank door and getting handed like a week's worth of groceries, and sending them away. And and that. It's a humbling experience. It is. Mm-hmm. It is because I, in my last job, I was earning very good money. Um, I was earning you know, with overtime and stuff. I was maybe coming away with a thousand pounds a week, and people have said to me, "You know, why did you walk away from that?" And mm-hmm. I'm like, "Well, I didn't actually walk away from it. the company closed because mm-hmm. um, they were paying you a thousand because pound they were paying a week. me a th- <laughs> and everybody else a thousand pound a week. You know what I mean? Um, I sort of learned a lesson from that too. Yeah. Don't pay everybody a thousand pound a week, but it was it was it was humbling. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it's but that's also taught me now. Um, like I've spoken to guys before who have maybe got a pot of money from somewhere and have started a business and yeah. have never had to struggle. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but now that we've struggled, it's also taught us to be very, very cautious, you know, with everything that we would... Um, yeah, calculated growth. Calculated growth and calculate before we would buy in anything. Like this year alone, we have invested in two new printers, two new laminators, um, a spray booth, which is getting delivered in the next couple of weeks. We've bought um, a machine for doing our own braille signs in house. We've bought all Excellent. digital welding. We've gone through, but that's and it's been a bit of a tough year. I was speaking to the accountant the other day, and she's like, "Look, that," and she says, "You know, you've bought a lot this year, as well as taking on another four employees mm-hmm. in the last twelve months. Um, all which is adds another hundred grand or whatever it may yeah. be to your to your outgoings. Mm-hmm. But if I look back on that now, you know, you learn from it that." Yeah, we've been here before mm-hmm. because you do. Yeah. We still struggle. So now. it's given you the experience. Yeah, it's given us the experience now. You know, and I look at now. Um, I've gone home at night sometimes. And I've said to the wife, oh, "I need such and such to pay us this week, and I need mm-hmm. such and such." You know, we have quite a large wages bill every Friday. I need that and get paid the wages. And she would say, "David, look where you were before. You yeah. know, you know, you get through it then. Do you know what I mean?" Um, and that always sort of helps keep us going as well mm-hmm. because we've we've, we've yeah. never we've never gone without. You know, yeah. even if you are getting fed out of a food bank. We've never actually gone without, you know. Um, one of our main things that I believe is something very important is every single member of staff we've taken on has been purposeful, mm-hmm. as for want of a better word. You know, they have all... In our place, there's only five guys who have experience in the signage industry. Mm-hmm. The rest of the guys have all come from an engineering or sheet metal working uh, yeah. background. Um, they're all welders, sheet mm-hmm. metal workers, mm-hmm. panel beaters, etc. Um, because where we have gone now um, from basically what you would call signs and graphics, we're building things now that require sheet metal work and yeah. welding, fabrication, mm. etc. But every single one of those people have been purposeful. And Philip and I said at the very start, you know, we wanted to make sure that the guys, that anybody who comes to work here, we, we look after them. You know, mm-hmm. So we yeah. pay them all above average wages for the signage, mm. for the signage industry. They're all paid very well. And we have it now that, don't get me wrong, there's ups and downs, but they're all on board yeah, do you know what I mean good. every one of them's on board um, and th- we have it like a small community you mm-hmm. know and they all get on well yeah. and they're all great guys and you know they're all sort of invested in what we're doing yeah. um, we've so important ever since we took our first employee yeah. we've never had anybody leave you know we've mm-hmm. never had anybody quit um, we've, everybody gets on most of the time 95% of the time with each other and that is really really important you've intentionally worked on the culture yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely so, yeah because no, anytime we went down with the guys for um, maybe a bit of video content or or a meeting with, with yeah. you there always seems to be laughter actually because funny enough I was well, I've told them there's, no, there's not going to be any laughing and work you know what I mean <laughs> 
laugh and slows you down. Yeah, but I, I seen some of the rushes. Like we shot a bit of video with you a couple of days ago, and I was looking through them and I seen the guys like laughing as they were lifting stuff and laughing as they were walking around, and it was lovely just to see a culture of, of happiness. And we, and then I'm sure it's not like that every day. It's not like that every day, but most they, they, they're, good. they're all great guys. They really are. Every single one. And every you single you one. wouldn't have a lot of laughter lines. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. Have, we wouldn't. Have, we, I wouldn't have any laughter lines. Like no, I'm very Stop serious. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, they are. It's and that's a learning process as well because I've never employed anybody before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's like you've all sort. That's all sorts of challenges when you start employing quite a few people. You know, um, but every single one of them, like, we couldn't do without them. And the guys that have come in from uh, various engineering firms. Like some of them have came from Rate Bus. Mm-hmm. Some of them have came from uh, SDC. Um, they come in and they go, you know, here's how we would build it. Do you know what I mean? And we listen to them. Yeah. You know, um, because they're guys who. They're not they working the same, but they're used to building big steel structures. Yeah. So these oh, guys are building cool. big steel scru- structures, which is one of our what they call it, USP unique selling points. Yeah. Yep. That everything we do, we build it in house. You know, we Excellent. don't outsource anything to outside engineering firms, which keeps our costs a bit lower than, mm. than other places. Um, and as, as I was telling you the other week, we've gone through that EN 1090 yeah. for CE certification, which is more challenges because now that we're getting into different markets, especially across the water in the UK, mm. people are asking for ISOs, they're asking mm. for EN 1090s, they're asking for also, and we're having to go through all this, which is costly procedures, mm. um, and also learning a lot as we go along, you know? Yeah. Um, and these procedures also teach us, the, the, with the EN 1090, we had to put processes and stuff in place for how we actually manufacture from a job coming into a job going out, and mm-hmm. those processes have to be really strictly adhered to, and we yeah, get yeah. monitored, we get audited in that once a year. So we have to now stick to that, and you know, it's and uh, it makes everything proper and everything traceable. And it's, it, uh, as I was saying to Philip the other day, it's, it's all very grown up. Do you know uh, it right? sounds, it just yeah. sounds very grown up, you know. Considering where you would have been if you'd rewinded back five years ago and thought, I'm going to be doing so many mm-hmm. of these different processes. The last time we were in, I seen the, the signs up saying about the specific steels and things. Yeah, it looks, it's, it looks uh, complex. You know, and sometimes I go, Quarantine. Is quarantine. <laughs> uh, that's where Henry stands when he comes in. You know, <laughs> put him in the corner. There's well, the non CE nonce corner, you know. <laughs> Um, well, but David, having you in hearing your story has been fantastic. Thank you, and it's, been, it's been so good just even hearing your, your, from your beginnings to where you are now mm-hmm. and even the, the bright futures ahead of you guys as well. If you were to leave anyone who's listening to the podcast at a minute with like one practical thing that they could go and do for their business, if they're a small business right now listening to this going, well, how do I pivot? How do I scale? How do I change my business? How do I change my culture of my, mm-hmm. my staff? What, what would you kind of say is a good takeaway? The one one thing that Philip and I sort of talk about, um, like Philip, <laughs> him and I are going away for his 40th birthday here in a few weeks, um, and we're going to ride motocross bikes in the mm-hmm. south of France. And our wives are coming with us to watch us ride motocross bikes <laughs> in the south of France because there's nothing trip. else around the place. It's <laughs> like 10 miles from the nearest town. Yeah. And Phil, my wife is consistently saying to me, she would say, David, what are you doing? You're nearly 40, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, and we'd say, don't take it so seriously. Yeah. You know, it is serious, yeah. but have this see to be able to laugh and joke. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's it's great and it creates a culture. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? We have worked with companies before, um, and it's it's all very it's all it's very serious. It, it is serious business. It's serious, but what should I say is it's just enjoy a bit of laughter. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And one of the big things for me was getting my family on board. You know, and um, having a very very understanding wife mm-hmm. who like we. You don't know Henry. I've talked to you uh, on a personal note. Um, we have had we we knuckled down for three four years, and we're very thankful that, that those three or four years happened because we've taken the lessons from that and brought mm-hmm. it to now. But on a business side of things, one of our biggest things is looking after the staff. Um, mm-hmm. Like a lot That's of the guys good. downstairs are, I pay them more than I pay myself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I heard a guy say one time, um, "Why should the army cook be paid more than the soldiers just because he feeds them?" Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and I remember hearing that and thinking, you know, I want to look after the guys, so a lot of them, as I say, are on more money than what I actually mm-hmm. take up. Don't get me wrong, I've got, we've got our perks as being yeah. the directors, but it's looking after them, you know, um, because they are the guys who are out there, mm-hmm. you know, they're customer facing, they're out putting signs up, they're the guys who are, you mm-hmm. know, so they need to be on board with everything mm-hmm. that you're doing, you know. That's great. But bit by bit as well, um, because it's as we've grown into where we are now and where we are continuing to go with the amount of work we have on for 2018, um, to try and do it all at once, mm-hmm. you know, it, it can overwhelm. Like I've said to you before, I've felt at times just totally overwhelmed, you mm-hmm. know, and it's just a little bit at a time. Um, and 
control in it, you know, and learn when to say no and learn when to say yes. Mm -hmm. Because um, one thing I've learned as well is um, doing what I say I'm going to do. Like if I say to you, Christopher, I'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock, it's doing my utmost to make mm -hmm. sure I'm there for 12 o'clock. Because good. to see saying yes to people when you really should say no, mm -hmm. you just end up in a pickle. And they know? remember. Yeah. And they remember. And they remember. Yep. You know, they definitely do. They remember. You know, if, and not letting people down. Mm -hmm. Or if you aren't going to make it, it's ringing up and telling people, you know, mm -hmm. I can't make this or I can't fulfill this or whatever. Just being honest. You know what I mean? Rather than promising people stuff that you can't fulfill. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, 2019. 2019, yeah, and the future. Uh, the looks future. fantastic for it does so far. Beyond Sam, mm -hmm. but we'll not look beyond. See what I did there? Yeah, I <laughs> like beyond, that. Like, right. like that I did like that. Um, Dave, thank you so much for coming Thank you very on. much for having me. Loved having Great. you. Um, and we'll maybe see you on the next one. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm Chris. I'm Henry. I'm Dave. And thanks for watching the Business Hustle. Thank you. Boom, baby. Boom, baby.